How to Trade Forex, Lecture 16. This lecture and the next were recorded over several days. They show how we look at the trading platform and make decisions using the tools that have been covered so far. So watch these two lectures together as a single entity. I'm going to take you through the process that I use every day when I'm trading to look at the various tools and techniques that we've been talking about in the course so far. You see a very strange looking screen here. It's actually the pound dollar and it's the monthly view. Because it's a monthly view, we only get the end of the rule of thirds. We have lots of the lines squashed together. The only thing that we can really see properly are the candlesticks themselves and the Bollinger Bands. And we can see that the Bollinger Bands have actually been through a bit of a squeeze, and we're talking about over a period of some months here. This is the 31st of May 2010, so quite a long time, and it's sort of burst out. We look as if we've come off the top Bollinger Band and are travelling down towards the middle one. So let's see what that looks like as a weekly chart. As a weekly chart, it sort of pronounces the effects a bit, but we've actually come through the middle and right down to the bottom Bollinger Band. Now, unless I was taking a really long view on trading, I'm using months as my charts instead of daily or hourly or whatever charts, then I wouldn't be taking too much notes of that. I just want to see the general overall pattern. We can now see quite clearly that the current prices are in the green buy only area. And they've been in that for a long time, but had a brief foray up into the uh, area of red, which is the sell only area. So let's keep going. If we go to a daily chart, now uh, we can see more detail again. What we can now see is that the candlesticks have been walking down, with a few brief exceptions, the lower of the Bollinger Band uh, lines. And in recent times, we've had some significant uh, support at where today's opening price was. We're talking about 165 uh, and various figures around there. And we're also constrained here with the 166 whole price line not being too far above us. So I'm going to look at the four hourly chart and see what's been happening over recent days and particularly over the course of today. And over the course of today, we've actually opened, gone to the middle, gone through the middle, up and hit the uh, 1.66 whole number figure and then come back down again. Earlier today, I was advising caution. Now, normally we would say if the price leaves the opening green line, goes up through the 50 pip line, plus 50 pips in this case, and uh, therefore breaks through, we will be looking for a trade, and it would be a buy trade in this case. However, I urge caution because of the proximity of 166. So let's see how that looks on a, an hourly chart. And here it is on the hourly chart. Uh, if I put in a new vertical line, and I double click on that, right click to get the properties, and I'm going to go to today's date, which is the uh, 27th of the 8th. But in actual fact, I want to go back to uh, last night's opening, which would have been the 26th, and that would be at 2300 in terms of this chart. And there it is. So we can see that's where the price opened last night, and it spent really all day going up. But on this scale of chart, it, that actually looks more impressive than it probably is, because this purple line is 50 pips away from the opening. It doesn't look quite purple because of the green around it. And there we can see more clearly it actually had at least two attempts to break through 166, didn't make it, and then for a period of three straight hours came down, a bit of a recovery, and as we stand now, and it's just after 6 p.m. in the evening, we've got a little doji there. So we'll carry on. I'm not going to bother with the 30 minutes, but I'm going to move to the 
the 1, the 5 and the 15 minute charts. These are the ones that I would use very strongly if I was trading on a, a daily basis for a couple of hours. So here's the 15. And again, same story, long slow ride up, uh, really walking, uh, bouncing off top and bottom of the bands, cutting through, walking along. We can see just about everything in here, including the squeeze. Left came down, and it's currently going back up again. But it has yet to break that 50 line, and it's still got the problem of the 166. Being 6 p.m. in the evening, I think even if we were moving quite strongly now through that line, I probably wouldn't do it for the day. So most of the action in the markets is closed, probably finished uh, in England at about 4 o'clock this afternoon. Still probably a lot of activity going on in the US markets, but we haven't got that overlap of the two markets giving us that additional volume. In fact, if I put on the volume bars for a moment by right-hand clicking and left-clicking on volume, we can see that the volume is in fact tailing off, having been up there for the course of the day. And also there was a spike around this big move in price time. That's interesting too. So looking at the five minute chart, we see again the same story, but we're now actually going into a bit of a squeeze. It'll be interesting to see how that develops because as we know, <clears throat> looking at previous squeezes, it will come out of that squeeze in one direction or the other, could be up, could be down. We're not fooled by the fact that it's in the squeeze, a lot of dojis on this five minute chart, and we're very near the top. It could just as easily come out strongly to the downside. So that's another reason why we certainly wouldn't be wanting to trade on a buy trade, because we're only interested in buy trades being in the green buy only area at this time. And if we look at the one minute chart, and there we can see it again. Uh, nothing greatly to get uh, excited about on there, and it's something that we're not ready to make a trade on. Now, the type of trading that we're doing here, the type of trading that I'm teaching you, is one which is requiring a lot of patience. I don't necessarily trade every day, I don't necessarily trade every week. Now you can do, we may well look at some techniques like that in the future. But this is safe, steady she goes trading. So we're only going to take trades that we're very confident in. So that concludes looking at the chart for today. Uh, we'll have another look at the chart tomorrow. We'll obviously have a new set of um, Jeff's lines in place. And we'll have whatever activity takes place overnight. And we'll add a second day of live trading um, examples to what we're looking at in this module. So this is another live trading day and it's early in the day. I'm just going to go through my start of day sequence as far as we've got so far. So there are still one or two things to add into this, but we haven't covered them in the training yet. So the first thing I'm going to look at is the Forex climate. And we can see it here. We're looking at the pound dollar on a one hour chart we can see that both the green line, which is the dollar, and the white line, which is the pound, are both below the dotted line. Therefore, both of them are weak on the one hour, and there's no great movement anticipated. Looking at the four hour chart, we can see that we've got uh, the pound below the line still, and the dollar weakening towards that line. So again, no great indication that today is going to be a strong trading day. And on the one-day chart, we've got still the scissors in place. So that tells me that we're looking at a day here where there's probably no great uh, movement involved. It's not going to be a huge day unless something like news comes along to disrupt that position. And now we turn to the pound dollar chart itself. And we're looking here at the daily chart. And we can see that the opening line is here, the green line. And we've had a couple of days where we've had some strong support. The currency movement was not able to go further down. And we're actually into a second day, consecutive day of upward movement. Now, yesterday we were constrained by the 166 whole number price point. 
and we're still constrained by that. The difference is that yesterday the purple line, which was plus 50 pips from the opening level, was below that 166 line, and therefore we were reluctant to get involved in a trade if the price went above the 50 pip line but didn't manage to breach that 166 whole number. Today is a better setup altogether because what we've got is the 166 in between the opening line and the 50 pips purple trigger line. So if during the course of today we get uh, the price moving above that 50 pip line, then I will be very much more likely to make a trade. The odds are that today is going to be a fairly quiet day, so it may well not happen. But if it does, I would be seriously considering entering a trade at that point. Of course, we're still in the green zone, which to me is the buy own zone, so things would have to look good on that front. So that's our overall picture looking at the day chart. Let's go down to the 15 minute chart now and see what's happening at present. And we can see that we had a bit of a squeeze at the opening of the day and, and some upward movement, some undulations around it. On the 15 minute chart, we've walked up the Bollinger Band, we've come through the middle, walked down the lower Bollinger Band a little, bounced off it, we're through the middle and we're heading towards the top. Now the interesting thing is going to be whether we breach that 166 and hit the upper Bollinger Band and then we'll be looking for decisions to whether we enter a trade, a buy trade or not. Taking that down to the 5 minute chart, it's already uh, again been above the upper Bollinger Band but hasn't made it through, again constrained by the 166 level. So we will also be looking for a breach of 166 on there too. And on the one minute chart, we can see that we are definitely being constrained by this 166 level. And we've got some traversing movement across the screen. So I'm going to leave this now for a couple of hours. And later in the day, we'll have a little look to see how things are developing. So it's now later in the day, just want to see what's happening. The same day, and we're looking at a one-day chart. We can see that the, the day open and has been up, crossed over that 160, didn't get to the plus 50 line, and actually came back down. If we go to the one-hour chart, we can see that in a, a little more detail. And, and if I insert a line, a vertical line, and put that uh, at the start of day. So we're talking about on the 27th at 2300. We'll get that there so we can see what's happened since the day opened. So we've had this upward movement restricted by 166, which is also coinciding with the upper Bollinger Band, back down through the Bollinger Band, back through the open of the day, touched the bottom Bollinger Band and basically went back up. Now, that's quite a big change and it was in fact a news item. And we'll be dealing with news items in the next module. So, the time is now 3.30 in the UK. Things are quieting down. Let's have a look again at the volume. Uh, there it is. It hasn't been a big day, but it, it's now beginning to tail off, and that will tail off even more in the next half hour or so. So I think the chances of a buy trade being set up, which would probably require the price to fall to the 50 pips below opening point, so down here, is now highly unlikely. So I consider that the end of today's trading. Unfortunately, there wasn't a trade to actually show you. But what we have looked at is the process for making that decision.